this morning, Kelloland investigates why a former DOC official is filing a complaint of discrimination over her dismissal from Pheasant Land Industries. Plus, severe weather chased concert goers from the Sioux Empire Fair's grandstand Thursday night. What fairgoers need to do to stay safe if more storms hit the fairgrounds tonight. Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom busters coming up, but first, our top story. A fired South Dakota Department of Corrections and Program Director has filed a charge of discrimination with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunities Commission. Stephanie Bowick was fired this week after being put on unpaid administrative leave by Governor Kristi Noem. Bowick was one of four people taken off the job after Noem's office received an anonymous complaint alleging sexual harassment, nepotism, poor pay, bad equipment, and dangerous conditions in the state prison system. Bowick was in charge of Pheasant Land Industries for the prisons. Bowick claims in her filing that she was fired in retaliation for reporting a sexual harassment allegation by another DOC female worker against former warden Darren Young at a conference in Deadwood. You can read our entire investigative report into Bowick's claims on this story right here on Kelloland.com, along with Young's statement to us. A motorcyclist involved in a tr crash on Interstate 90 in western Kelloland earlier this week has died from his injuries. The 74-year-old biker died Friday after his motorcycle was struck by an SUV making a lane change southeast of Sturgis on Monday. A 68-year-old woman who was a passenger on the motorcycle has serious injuries. The Highway Patrol says charges are pending against the driver of the SUV. The city of Sturgis is reporting issuing more than 530 temporary vending licenses so far for this year's motorcycle rally. That number is up slightly from last year. The rally officially kicked off Friday with an opening ceremony that included an appearance by the Budweiser Clydesdales. This morning, the mayor's ride will take place at 9 o'clock. The rally runs through next weekend. Kelloland News has a team of reporters covering the rally. Be sure to check out their stories throughout Rally Week on Kelloland News and right here on Kelloland.com. A Sioux Falls family was chased out of their home by an early morning fire in their basement. Fire Rescue responded to the home located near 49th Street and Cliff Avenue at 2.30 this morning. Crews quickly put out the fire, but a cat died in that fire. Neighbors, relatives, and the Red Cross are helping the family with a place to stay. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Let's get a first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Root in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We had round two of severe weather last night in central and northeastern Kelloland. Round three, it will be on the table for eastern and southeastern portions of the viewing area later tonight, so keep an eye on things. Kelloland Live Doppler HD radar right now showing rain departing South Dakota from the north and east, but we do have some scattered showers starting to make their way into northwestern parts of South Dakota, north of Spearfish and Sturgis. So if you are going to be out and about this morning out west, keep in mind you may be dodging raindrops and you might hear a distant rumble of thunder or two as well. But the bulk of the activity later, like I said, is going to be focused to the east. Here's a view of Sturgis this morning, a quiet start to the day. But we do stay more dry than not as we head through the afternoon. We then head over downtown with a view of the fairgrounds. Another day for the Sioux Empire Fair. 73 with a variable wind at 3 miles per hour. But once again, you're going to have to keep an eye on things if you have evening plans at the fairgrounds. Temperatures in the 50s out west in a couple of areas, but 60s are the predominant trend as we head through the start of your day. Some 70s, though, southwestern and southeastern parts of Kelloland, rather. But the other thing to keep an eye on is going to be the dew point. It will be rather muggy today, especially East River. We'll talk about that threat for severe weather today, plus what to expect through the rest of your seven-day forecast coming up. All right, thank you very much, Adam. While well, the Sioux Empire Fair Management is keeping close tabs on the weather to ensure that fairgoers stay safe today. Threatening winds, rain, and lightning prompted the evacuation of the grandstand ahead of Old Dominion's concert appearance Thursday night. Severe weather can pose a serious danger to people at the fairgrounds. We have tents that are up with uh, all of the poles and our little lightning rods. I mean, you're high up in the grandstand. We have rides behind me that are very tall. Officials say it's important to, if, if you're attending the fair today to bring rain gear, pay close attention to the weather, and take seriously any weather-related announcements by the fair staff. People who had tickets to Thursday night's concert will 
get a refund. Now, today's fair hours are from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Admission is $10, $5 for children, and free for ages 5 and under. Carnival rides in the Midway start at noon. Frankie Ballard is the featured grandstand performer at 8 p.m. The show is free with a paid fair admission. The Sioux River Folk Festival at Newton Hill State Park near Canton includes workshops at 10 a.m. and noon with live music throughout the day starting at noon with David Allen. A uh, campground contest takes place at 5 p.m. with more music into the night, wrapping up with the Dead Horses at 9.45. Tickets are $30. Superior Siren is the featured performer at tonight's free Levitt at the Falls concert in downtown Sioux Falls. The Levitt Lawn opens at 6 p.m. The music starts at 6.30. The CAF Air Power History Tour is making a stop at Sioux Falls Regional Airport. You can check out vintage World War II era planes, including the B-29 and B-24 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Admission is $20, $10 for children, free for ages 10 and under. Several vendors are selling their handmade works at an art and craft show in Esteline, South Dakota. It's taking place at the American Legion on Main Street from 9 to 3. Admission is free. Super Saturday at the outdoor campus in Sioux Falls includes free archery target shooting. No registration is required. And tonight's free Moonlight movie at Faywick Park in downtown Sioux Falls is Black Panther, rated PG-13. The movie begins at 9.15. Popcorn, candy, soda, and water will be available for purchase. Adam? Well, much of the start of your day is going to stay mainly quiet, but it is going to be muggy at times, especially to the east where dew points are going to hold in the 60s and even into the 70s at times. Overall, highs do get into the upper 80s to low 90s, but if you're East River, you are going to want to keep an eye on the skies later in the day. We do have that risk for showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be strong to severe. So here's the setup. We have low pressure basically over the area with our warm front lifting to the north along I-29, a cold front to the west, and then in between is that warm, unstable air mass that could see some activity fire up later on this evening. To the north and west toward Rapid City, Sturgis and the like, you can see a few scattered showers, maybe hear a rumble of thunder this morning, but overall you're mainly dry through the day. That being said, we do have our slight risk for severe weather level two out of five in place for everybody in yellow from Watertown through Sioux Falls as far west as winter, and then a marginal risk level one out of five for Aberdeen, Mulbridge Pier, headed as far south and west as Bennett County and then Cherry County over the border in Nebraska. All forms of severe weather on the table, including damaging winds, large hail, and even an isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out. So like I've said, stay weather aware, through the evening and into the night. By Sunday afternoon, though, we do get improvement in place, but not before we watch activity firing up later this evening to the east and into the southeast as well. By Sunday afternoon, we do have high pressure building back in. We stay mainly dry as we head into the start of next week, but then we have another chance for rain coming around by about Tuesday going into Wednesday. Now, the bulk of our moisture through Monday evening will be East River with the exception being in north central Kelloland. Unfortunately, if you're West River, more often than not, you do stay dry for now. You do get your chance for rain coming around by the middle of the week. Highs today, either side of 90 and pretty muggy to the east, with lows tonight falling into the 60s across the board. And again, we do have that threat for strong to severe thunderstorms, especially in southeastern Kelloland. Your seven-day forecast stays warm, if not outright hot and humid, through at least Wednesday, with a few more showers lingering on Sunday, another chance for rain late Tuesday and the early Wednesday morning. Then we try and cool down a little bit by the end of next week. Have a great day, everybody. For more on your local news, weather, and sports, you can always head on over to Kelloland.com.